I'm recording this video on my end on this one camera and you're recording it on a different camera in New York City. I'm in Atlanta and I feel kind of like this could be found footage and someone could just and then splice them side by side and make our own version. And just, yeah, I can uh, make an interactive version <laughs> and I'll, I'll put it on Netflix, get that Netflix money. So we both played Telling Lies a couple of weeks ago at this point. If made us both feel really creeped out being able to go through these fictional video calls that it felt like you were sort of invading other people's privacy and it seems like really relevant at the moment too with like you know data data privacy rights and being a, a pretty much a global issue the one thing i actually really appreciated about the game was how well it implements live action stuff and it's stuff that i went to school for you know I, I, i'm a screenwriting directing major so i have a soft spot in my heart for that kind of stuff and it's nice to be able to see it uh, in 2019 in a game that is, is actually was actually really, really good. I actually really liked the game. So I, I just wanted to like pick your brain and, and see what you thought about not only the game, but its use of live action actors acting things out. Well, I mean, it did creep me out and there were certain scenes and I won't get into them because I don't want to spoil telling lies for anybody. Certain scenes that just completely were inappropriate. I've been in situations as they're portrayed in the game and boy, I didn't want anyone to see that. Um, but I think what Telling Lies does so well is it uses real actors. Um, it uses them uh, very well. Uh, their performances are amazing. And so they really make you believe that they're on you know one or another end of these conversations. Yeah, it, it, to me, it, it felt like such a wonderful evolution to what we saw in her story, which was like a very simple, believable setup where somebody was in a police station, you were looking at uh, interrogation footage of, of someone who kept being brought in to see if you know they'd actually done it or you know didn't do it um, and I was looking at some of the behind the scenes stuff on, on YouTube and, and seeing how the game was made and it was really cool to see I also got a chance to speak to Sam Barlow at E3 and talking about how like the special kind of camera rigs that they'd set up with wires that stretched uh, for you know however many meters so that the two ca the two actors could sort of see each other at the same time so I thought that was kind of cool, incorporating this really new, inventive way to not only lean into the live action stuff, but like, you know, like we're doing right now, look into the camera and, and break that fourth wall. I, it, it definitely is like a far cry from the stuff that I used to see as a kid growing up. Like we were just talking right before we started recording about like, you know, CD-ROM games or even the Sega CD, like things like Night Trap or um, I was talking Mega about- Race. Super Mega yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Sewer Shark, the, the thing that blew my mind as a kid that I swore was the future. Um, <laughs> but then you're seeing it now too, right? Like you're seeing those those same design structures with things like Bandersnatch, which was a thing that I didn't love, but I, I could appreciate um, how it kind of snuck its way into everybody's living rooms. How do you feel about something like Bandersnatch? I did not check it out. I've played other choose your own adventure type things on Netflix. They did a whole Minecraft story mode thing and I didn't like them. Um, I like playing games on game systems and not on Netflix. So I actually avoided Bandersnatch. Um, oh wow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I won't hold it against you. But yeah, I remember when it came out, I was extremely intrigued because it was like, oh, we're just going to sneak in a choose your own adventure style video game into everyone's living room. I mean, I don't think it ran on everything. I think it had to have like either a console or like a smart TV that could handle it. The idea that like live action in general is becoming a thing that you can interact with is kind of cool because it, it like, you can lean into it as a strength, right? Like I, I think about even some parts of Control, something that I started playing last night actually. And there are moments where there are live action, there, there's a actor playing to the camera and, and it's, it's real. You can actually see his face and his, and his emotions and everything. And the way they, they blend it so well together like uh it's pretty cool i mean I'm, I'm really into that idea and like we're seeing a resurgence of, of of live action incorporated into games so i'm wondering if you have any like i don't know do you have any games that you played recently that because I mean, you mentioned to me to, on slack that like you're kind of into live action games well i've been in the live action games for a long time i was there i worked at comp usa in the 90s and all the cd rom games were coming out like mega race um what seventh guest had some stuff in there um, and it was just like a gimmick. It was like, hey, we can put live action in our games now. So all the performances were corny and goofy and everyone was playing it over the top. Uh, it was almost like they were voicing a cartoon rather than acting an actual scene out. Uh, and I think that overplaying was uh, purposeful back then. Um, and since then, there was a long period of time where all the live action stuff we would have gotten 
uh, was being released in stores as like, you know, DVD home mystery stuff. I mean, you've seen that junk, right? Actually, I haven't. No, they used to have the uh, mystery parties or trivia and they'd have a VCR, a, v- a video cassette, and you'd put it in and play it at home. They'd be, okay, turn to something, something in your book. Or if you think it's this, fast forward to blah, blah, blah. And uh, they did this a lot with DVDs when you could skip easily. Now, a lot of live action stuff that was straight to home, not console, on a DVD. So we're seeing like uh, the resurgence of that, only it's much higher quality now. And you have to imagine... Um, the amount of money that goes into producing a, a, a big budget video game these days, uh, it must cost as much to create CG, like good CG, as it does to get a couple of actors into a studio. Uh, my particular favorite uh, most recently was uh, Quantum Break, also by Remedy. It was a, a beautiful use of, uh, I mean, both the melding of the live action cutscenes, the actors were amazing. Uh, which one was it? It was the... Iceman from X Men. That's all I know. Him. That's all I know. Uh, Iceman him from X Men. Yeah, it was. Uh, what's his name? No, now we're gonna have to spend an hour figuring out his name. I, got, I gotta Google this now. I don't want to. He I has a brother too. He has a brother, a twin brother. Uh, he was in. Uh, Sean Ashmore. Ashmore, and yeah, and, and I think it's Aaron Ashmore is the other one. No, but yeah, I, I also remember a couple years ago, um, the weird experiment that was Need for Speed. I think it was just oh. called Need for Speed. No <laughs> subtitle. Do you remember that? It was cute. It was a nice try. No, it felt like a 90s FMV game and the characters were over the top and acted super cool and hip and and I'm not sure who was directing them and, and it was just goofy. You know what I like best about old school FMV and the Need for Speed kind of did it too is the low quality like CG backgrounds they put the people on. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. It like, was so bad. Bad colors, and they're like, let's light these people red. Why? Uh, I don't know. Just yeah. light them red. Screw it. It's a video game. But yeah, I also think about, like, again, the same Sega CD era of, of, of things where it was like, I, I linked you to um, this one game I'd never heard of until, like, way later, uh, where you were basically editing a video for for Marky Mark, <laughs> you could you the could make me a video were... series. Yeah, they had yeah. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, and uh, who else? CNC Music Factory had one too. Oh wow, they had they had all the all the bangers on there. I guess moving forward, I mean, I, I actually I do want to see more live action stuff, especially like I mentioned before, like stuff that's well written, well acted, and with, with more notable actors like we saw with Telling Lies. I think that's like a healthy indicator of where things might be headed. Um, I was curious to pick your brain to see like what what you want to see more of, or, or maybe even what you want to see less of. With Telling Lies, I mean, I, I, I'd love to see more like that. I would love to see more footage like that. It's an interesting way to present a narrative uh, in pieces. It's like a jumble puzzle uh, of an actual movie in all this time. I mean, that was kind of jarring for me, the, 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 the feeling that I was watching these people covertly. And it's weird because I know these actors. I've uh, uh, The guy, the main, the main actor whose name I will never remember. Uh, was, I'm going to Google it. You're going to Google it? Uh, he was the lead in um, Upgrade, and I love him so much. And and I know he's an actor. I've watched Upgrade like three or four times in the hospital. Um, and, and, and I know he's an actor, but still watching it, I was like, crap, I feel bad for this guy. Yeah, yeah. Logan Marshall Green, by the Logan way. Logan Marshall Green, thank you. He's an attractive man, by the way. Yeah, uh, he not, is. Not bad to look at, and I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, if I, no, could, I mean, I, I agree, yeah. If I could be a man that looked like Logan Marshall Green, I would. Life would be a lot easier for your boy, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'd love to see more FMV cutscenes. Um, I like the integration. Um, I really love what they did with Quantum Break. What Remedy did with Quantum Break, where they integrated the real live action with the video game cutscenes, and they did it in a way, it, was, it wasn't quite seamless, but it still felt like I was part of that narrative. And I love feeling like I'm part of the narrative. What uh, Telling Lies does is I feel like I'm watching the narrative. I'm still, I'm still involved. We got the screen. We've got the woman watching behind the screen. Um, I see her reflection in the computer screen as I'm scrubbing through these videos. But I want something that's, that feels just a little more interactive than that. I'm not sure what Control does. I haven't played it yet. But uh, I mean, is is that something that Control does or? Uh, not really. It, it's it's a little bit of so you find. I mean, as far as I can tell so far, I'm only a couple of hours in. But like you find some some videotapes and then you you play them, and it's a guy sort of this instructional videos where he's talking about the Bureau of Control, the Federal Bureau of Control, and and like the sort of uh, the, 
the things that they've been uncovering and, and, and working on and, and it sort of like helps tease out a little bit of the lore of the world, which is kind of cool. There's also moments where you're walking around and there's there's like this really cool projection that happens that it looks like you're, um, it looks like it was filmed in a dark room um, with a light behind an actor. So you're sort of seeing a silhouette of them. And um, it, it's a really cool way to incorporate video in, in a, a, a bit of like a 3D space that it's not just you looking at a screen or you looking at a video and like, like I said before. So I definitely want to see more of that moving forward too, where it's like maybe, I know motion capture and performance capture has gotten to a place where it's pretty, pretty close to what it would look like if they were just you know, being recorded on a camera, but I personally, I do want to see more things like telling lies and, and ways to, you know, mess around with timelines and, and piece things together, because that was a really cool mechanic, but I also want to see it, like you said, incorporated into more, um, more narrative driven, like, you know, linear experiences. But I get where you're coming from. I want to see, I want to be uh, playing a 2D platforming game and, and, and have like a video screen in the back, you know, in the background, playing a live action movie just for no reason. And I want to see, uh, I, I want to be driving through Times Square in, in the next Need for Speed or whatever and have live action videos playing. Hopefully not of the same people from that one Need for Speed game. <laughs> but just, you know, hey, commercials. Man. I will go for commercials. I would, yeah, I would go that far and say you want a live action commercial on a TV in a game, go for that. As long as the production values are good, the acting's good, I'm fine. And if you want to do Sewer Sharks, if you want to do Night Trap, uh, just lean in hard to the badness and embrace it. You know, either go real goofy or go real serious. Just don't meld the two. I also think from like a writing and performance stance that it's fun to do. It, it might be like a fun prospect for an actor to be like, oh yeah, this scene that we'll, that we're going to play, the, the viewer is going to have a decision to make, so you get to play this thing out in five different ways. It's kind of like the way uh, Bandersnatch did it, where there were moments where you play things you know, low key and there are other moments where you're just flipping out. Um, so that's got to be an attractive uh, offer to people that like to you know dive into that kind of stuff from from both the writing stance and the and the performing world yeah just try it like the director saying let's just try it this way and then okay let's try it this way and let's try it this way and they're like which take are we gonna use all of those all of them <laughs> I would just like to say this is an excellent opportunity for me to randomly have a video uh, Transformer toy on the screen with me, which I don't get to do often enough. Is it happening right now? It is. It is.